Okay, 532. So this is a quick tutorial um, about placemaking and about the level of detail you want to start getting at with your placemaking. And the first thing to think about is what is the camera going to see and what is the camera getting close to? And as you start blocking out your scenes, um, you want to think about what the camera is close to. Um, Obviously, you're doing early tests without worrying about much detail, but as the camera is moving close to things, you need multiple levels of detail. In other words, you're layering up the detail to make things happen. So a lot of you have sort of these nature scenes, a little bit of forest scene kind of thing happening. I'm going to do an edge of water, and then later in the semester, we might do sort of a forest scene, but same kind of concepts apply. So I've already started with um, a flat ground, right, um, and have done just some really quick painting on it to create some highs and lows. I know that I am, um, you know, sort of a forest kind of setting, so this has got to go here in the background. So let's kind of start there, um, and let's get rid of that background in our context. Oh, man, I've got to remember where that's at. Uh, it's not there. Um, it's not under that grab. I always forget where that's at. Oh, good grief. Location. Background. City to... Um, let's do mountains for this particular one. Yeah, that looks good. So mountains are good. Um, and let's see here. I'm, I'm going to start next by looking at... Um, we, were, we were doing edge of water. So I want to go to weather... And I'm not sure why the ocean is underneath weather, but it is. So under weather, ocean, and I'm going to turn the ocean on. And the ocean that I like to use um, the most uh, is Atlantic Ocean. It has this really beautiful effect that, that really works well in terms of this sort of wider edge. Um, where the water meets the surface, it changes the texture pattern. Um, to make it look a little bit foamy, uh, it just has more depth to it. And you can see, I mean, it's like complete chaos across the plane. But again, I'm not really interested in that because really I'm going to have the camera down in something like this, right? Um, so, well, I yeah, we need to worry about that uh, a little bit, um, but you guys get the idea, okay? We're really focused in on this area right here. And I'm not going to force you watching me, you know, place and find everything. I'm just, I've already got sort of the scene built. I'm just going to start turning things off and on and talk you through my mode of thinking on things. So one of the first things I'm always doing, edge of water, is this isn't a cool edge of water. Um, it looks ridiculous. Um, you wouldn't have greeny grass and water coming up next to each other. Um, you know, and, and it often helps to find reference material, but I like to start finding things that begin breaking up what the edge of water is doing. Um, just like that, right? Um, so this was a mossy embankment from Quixel. Um, looks super, super cool. Oh, and, and keep in mind too, uh, with the ocean height, you can kind of move that up and down a little bit, which gets a little bit crazy. I believe I had settled on minus 0.75 as the approximate right height for it. But you can see that that water edge is much more playful. It's, it's much more interesting to look at and it feels more genuine. Um, the next thing, just to kind of expand along that, um, I added in another rock. And so that's just from the standard library, rock 11. But if you notice those two things, um, while they're sort of interesting, they don't really blend together very well. So the next level of detail that I went with is simply going to um, the library vegetation wild wild um, what was that grass and flowers ugh um, and I was simply coming in and just to cover up this scene um, you don't always have to use vegetation paint right you can come in and do some things sort of one group of grassy stuff at a time just enough to start breaking that up like that. And it doesn't take very much work to do. Um, so I just added in a few things in just a few seconds here. Misclick. 
And often as I'm building these things in, so um, I've got right now sort of mossy embankment through wild grass, right? This is all sort of part of this same edge that I want to work with. So a lot of times what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and say, I need to create a new container. So let's go to, I guess it's create subcontainer now. That's kind of fun. Let's move it right here. And I'm going to rename that to edge of water stuff, right? So at this point, I can grab all of those, drop them in my edge of water. And now I have one button to turn those on and off, um, except I miss it, missed a few things, it looks like. That little dude and that little dude need to also go into edge of water, right? So you want to keep that stuff organized for sure want to keep that stuff organized, okay? It's just going to help you immensely as you go along. Okay, so the next thing that I added in, because I'm, I'm right here along the edge, um, was rather than relying on sort of the painted surface, right, this kind of stuff. Oh, and it looks like I've added in, um, actually added in my painted vegetation as well. Let's pull that out of that container. Um, so the next thing you can see is I've got sort of this edge where this edge blends doesn't look too good. Um, so simply adding in the painted vegetation, you know, and again, I'm not doing a lot, um, but I'm doing just enough to sort of create that um, additional density and hide those seams. And that begins to build that sort of layering across the scene. It's, it blends all those pieces together. Um, and lets them start to look a little bit, well, not a little bit, a lot more natural in terms of the setting. Okay, and then I'm also paying attention to where I'm going to move the camera. It's like right here, maybe not so good. Right here is, right? So the next thing you'll notice, uh, this, I did, did some modifications um, to the standard um, topography sculpting. So let's go back to that flat. Um, the paint terrain. So often, uh, you know, we talk about sculpting the terrain, right? So that's that first set of tools where you can come in and begin to pull all of those edges up and down, um, which is nice. But we don't talk a lot about painting the terrain. And the paint terrain tool is really, really excellent. So this default green is just like way too much, right? So one of the first things that I usually do is so this first box right here is going to be your default material. This last box is when I get the terrain to a certain steepness, it's going to start replacing the grass with the rocks. These middle two, I can start painting new surfaces with. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of the super, super grainy grass. Let's change that to the grassy ground. Um, it just has a little bit better feel to it. And then the next thing that I did was I came in, um, I love this uh, uh, pebble texture right here. It's really excellent. And I just painted a, a surface um, to start defining a path. And, you know, you could do this with the pebbles. Um, if it's more of a forest scene, it might be that I'm replacing that with forest ground, something like that. That starts to work. Um, it's almost... Um, it, it, that's almost not obvious enough. Um, maybe I could do wood chips for that one um, and change its scale just a little bit, right? So it's it's a little bit clearer what that is. But for this sort of edge of water, um, this pebble is a really excellent texture. Let's drop its scale down just a little bit. Oops, too low. Hit the camera. But you can also see they have it's mapped super super well, you guys. I mean, the, the the surface quality as the camera gets close is just really really nice. Um, done a great job of faking stuff in on that, right? So if I start thinking about the camera getting close to this path now, um, I can tell you know this is not right. Um, just the transition here to there doesn't look so good, um, and I really want to start replacing these kind of items as well. 
So one of the next pieces I brought in was more this cliff face rock. Much more dramatic. Looks much, much better. Um, again, I probably need to come in along the edge here. Again, that is not a natural looking transition. Um, lots of different methods you can use to get rid of it. The easiest one probably is just to hide it. So let's go back to um, my painted vegetation. And let's just do a little bit of additional painting right along that edge. Super cool, super easy to do. Again, it's just sort of paying attention to things. Um, oh, fish, right? Um, Wanda is actually a group of fishes. They're fishy fishies. Yeah, you know, again, just finding those opportunities to get that secondary emotion is super, super nice. Sometimes there's something that you see, sometimes they're not, make sure that they're not doing something awkward, like swimming out of the water. Um, I've seen that before on projects and it ends up being embarrassing, right? Um, you know, so you've got to make sure that they're positioned carefully and appropriately. But again, those elements that have secondary motion are great. Um, there's another group of them. And again, this isn't to say, so everybody must do these. But if I go to, um, uh, I believe it's under characters and then critters. Um, obviously, I use probably overuse the butterflies often, but C Squad is super super cool right here. So you know, get those things up in the air, and so you have those things flying around. Probably even higher than that. It's important, but really nice secondary elements to start bringing in. So as I'm looking around, I get those little flashes of motion um, because when you're in VR, uh, it, it, it just triggers your eyes. Uh, it just sort of does these look here kind of moments, um, both with the shadows. And we know if it's casting shadow there, there's got to be something above my head. Um, and it builds a richness into the landscape. Um, so let's continue going on down. Um, along the walkway, you know, if you just leave the walkway blank, um, Things just don't look very good. They just don't look right. Um, if I'm in a natural sledding, I have to step over things. I have to step around things. Um, and we know that, and our brains are not convinced if some of those things aren't there, right? So adding that in, adding in uh, some leaves, right? Um, like it's one of those things you don't even notice when I turn them on um, right here. But it's one of those elements, again, that builds that transition between grass and this, that just allows things to be more convincing. And again, same thing with this um, tree stump right here to add a little bit of texture. It needs that little bit of extra work around it for that to be sort of convincing. So again, just sort of painting in some of these edges where that works. Um, and perhaps I want to change how I'm painting this right here. So I've got a seven foot paintbrush. Let's change that to a five foot paintbrush. Again, I'm just painting those pebbles along that edge so that that works. Um, and so that I can see that little bit of depth and layering grass to tree stump to cliff wall as something that I'm now coming down. Cool. Um, let's keep going through what I've added in. Um, tall grass, you know, again, just adding in some individual pieces. Adding in some rocks, things like that. Again, where you notice something that doesn't look quite right, um, it's a great opportunity to place entourage again. Um, you know, again, something we do always in architecture, right? Um, that doesn't look right. Let's stick a tree in front of it. Um, VR is going to do the same thing, right? Where I don't have an edge that seems quite natural or something that seems quite normal. Drop a piece of entourage. And as you're doing that, remember that working with entourage, if I can use the same element multiple times, I'm actually doing myself a pretty big favor in terms of my computer. So if I have this rock, I can shift click 
move that rock and say it's going to be an instance. Um, so in other words, it um, the, the computer doesn't think about its two rocks. It is one rock in two locations. And eventually, you know, if I have 40 rocks in my scene, that starts to add up and eventually it starts to hit the computer. Um, and so a lot of these elements, you know, I can take that and roll it around and, you know, it's a different rock now at this point, um, even though it's the same rock, you know, so you can really continue to work with those kind of things. Um, C squad rock. Yeah. And so that is really what I want you thinking about in terms of building your base set of layers as these pieces come together. Um, starting to think about how those elements work. Um, always thinking about layering uh, in terms of your objects. What is my foreground? What is my midground? What is my background? And then as you get into the back background, and that's where, okay, we have to start taking care of those things as well. Um, but those are much, much more minor details, much easier things to fix pretty quickly as you're working through these projects. Cool, so that's the kind of level of detail that I'm wanting you guys to achieve. Um, and again, the fastest and easiest way to get there, and you can see, I mean, I did this whole thing uh, less than 30 minutes um, in terms of before starting the tutorial and doing this tutorial. So it's, again, it's not about painstakingly placing every piece. It's really about understanding what a space is going to be like and how do I create that foreground, midground, background kind of feel for each location so that our eye has a lot of work to do. Our eye has to really absorb the information on the site, finding those things that don't look quite right. That gap right here would be one of the next ones that I would want to address you know, beginning to paint over them and find them. Because again, people are going to look everywhere on these um, unless we don't give them much to look at, in which case they're, they're not going to be interested. So find those things on your sites as you're building. Foreground, midground, background. Thanks all. Cheers.